Hello there and welcome to Fairyland Cottage and thanks very much for joining me here today. How are you all doing? June is coming to an end. It's been an interesting month here at Fairyland. The sun has been shining gloriously with bouts of thunderous rain. The plants and the trees are really enjoying all the wonderful rain and the sun. The vegetables are slower as I said before this year, so I'm having to be kinder to myself and just accept what's going to grow and what won't. These are the vegetables from a few years ago. It's interesting looking back and seeing what grows different years. And of course, not beating yourself up. What I've found since having a child is that life seems to run away with us. Little things that I would have, of course, had the time to do before I don't because of my priorities changing. But I'd love to talk today about staying grounded in an increasingly artificial world. And what do I mean by artificial? Well, there's a lot of talk at the moment about artificial intelligence. And there's a lot of talk about artificial food and how it's really damaging our health. So I thought we could talk about the two. I listened to a wonderful lecture podcast by Mo Gaudet. He used to be one of the AI experts in Google and now he's written a book and travels the world telling everybody about the concerns with AI. He says we may think it doesn't include us or it doesn't involve us, it doesn't matter. But he says we're using AI every single day and at the moment, AI is a little child being parented by us adults. And so we are the parents and we are in control of how that AI grows up to be. I don't pretend to know a lot about AI, only from what I learned in one or two podcasts, but it really got me thinking because when I listen to these things, I want to retreat more into nature, get back more to basics, get more back to things that are real to me. And yet he says that there is no way of getting away from it. It is going to be the way that the world is. So we have to understand it and know how to interact with it. And if we can then use AI for the betterment of humanity rather than the detriment. But with all this thinking, I find myself wanting to go back to what is natural to me. And Mo actually suggested that the way is to get back to nature. He said to be very conscious of what we are swiping when we are online, what we are clicking on, what we are watching. When I find myself wanting to retreat and get off online, he's suggesting that you are the parent, so be very conscious what you are putting out there online. If you're leaving a comment, that the comment is kind. Because if we're always leaving mean comments, then of course AI is learning that that's the world, it's mean. He was saying how we don't need more intelligence in the world or more technology. We need more compassion, more kindness, and I would add more natural. And by natural, I mean getting back to the roots. Not thinking that we can control or lord it over nature. Having this deep appreciation for what we have. finding out different herbs, different plants, and how they can benefit us. It's said that 
any type of weeds or herbs that grow near your home. Grow because it's something that will benefit your body. And these are the self-heal, the prunella vulgaris. And they're fantastic for my husband's skin. But of course, I have a very expert naturopath and I'm able to find out more from people who are expert in that area. In relation to the increasing amount of artificial food, food that has many different ingredients in the packaging or alone something that comes in packaging, it's making me more conscious to keep food simple. Simple and nutritious, as best as I can. There is no perfect world. There's so many different varieties. We're all doing the best we can with the resources that we have. So I'm always looking at different things. Say the simple nettle, a weed that grows everywhere. And even with nettle, you can make the stalks into string, which you can then weave into clothes. And in this world that seems to be holding so much emphasis on technology, I find myself wanting to read more about the older ways. Even when we're getting real food now, it could be sprayed heavily with pesticides, fertilizers. A lot of food can be genetically modified. We're moving away and away and away from natural. There can be loads of arguments for, but at the end of the day, we cannot control nature. There's always going to be a consequence when we try to. And like with AI, Mo says that we don't even know in about eight years time when AI is more intelligent than the most intelligent human on this planet, we then don't know what's going to happen. But now, he says, we have the power to make our choices, make our choices in the sense of what we choose or act, what we say how we love those around us, how we respect ourselves, and of course respect everyone else. So we've talked so much about William Glasser and how he talks about mental health and connecting with the self, bringing it all back home. We're not going to be able to connect with other people if we cannot connect with ourselves. With all this talk of artificial food, it makes me want to be more real. Books that are old and meaningful to me. This vegetable book here is the one that my grandmother used. Not much has changed. We only need a certain amount of information. Mo was saying how, of course, technology has increased exponentially. We are getting more intelligent as the years go on. And with that intelligence, we are able to create things that will serve humanity. But then he said there's the other side. Our lack of intelligence harms humanity and the planet. So AI is not necessarily going to be a bad thing but it's how us as humans use the AI that is going to determine how the world is. If we're sharing with AI that natural, simple, real food is what benefits us, then it's learning. The same way that I'm teaching my child. Real food, simple food, cooking food. I spend a lot of time in the kitchen bringing nutritious food to the table because I really value whole foods. 
And as the world gets busier and busier, and there's more and more activities to be done, I find myself doing less activities. Doing less, more at home. Having quality over quantity. There's no point any of us burning out. It doesn't serve ourselves or anybody around us. Learning how to say no. And sitting at home, maybe listening to some music or reading a book. Doing a little craft that we like. What I've been finding lately is that it's so important for me to just do something that I love. Even if it's just something small. Our little fairy's routine has changed. So I cook the dinner in the morning. We eat and then she naps. And I've been finding myself getting back into crochet again, which I had left for a while. And just enjoying that space. I'd love to know what you think about this topic. The world getting more artificial. Whether you agree or disagree or what's your perspective on it all. I'll leave the podcast below with Mo Gaudet for anyone who just wants to listen. For me, it touched something. I don't pretend to know anything about artificial intelligence bar what I've learned from listening to one or two podcasts. But it struck something in me. Because Mo has had a very interesting life. He's had some tragedy. And he's changed his life because of that. And where I thought it was going to be a podcast about machines and technology was really a podcast about being in the moment and spirituality, connecting with yourself, with nature, with those around you. None of us know when our final breath is. None of us know what tomorrow holds. But we do know that the actions and thoughts that we create today are going to create a future. So how to stay grounded in an increasingly artificial world? Make your world as real as possible. As meaningful as possible for you. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to have any high status. It can be watering your plants, talking to your plants, can be as simple as breathing, slowing down, knowing that you're doing the best that you can. It's something that I remind myself every day. Before, years ago, I would have been so self-critical and would have gone on for days and days. Now, if I'm finding I'm overwhelmed or I'm struggling, self-talk that I tell myself I'm doing the best I can take time to breathe what do I need and sometimes it is shutting off everything online but Mo was very clear that it's so important that what we put out that we feel is benefiting society And so, even though I was overwhelmed this month and was not going to do a video, Terry gathered some beautiful shots from before and I thought I would share something that was important to me, that holds value to me and that I hope has served you in some way. So let's chat in the comments below. I value everything you say and I love hearing different perspectives from all around the world. Coming here just for a little monthly chat. So thank you very much for watching and listening. Have a wonderful month.
and I hope to see you in the next one.